Okay, so on today's show, perpendiculars and hyperbolic geometry. How perpendiculars and hyperbolic geometry mesh. So again, the idea, hyperbolic geometry says I've got a line, I've got a point not on the line, there are multiple parallels to line M through point P not on M. There are multiple parallels. That is the postulate. So a couple theorems for us to consider that will set up the work we do for the remainder of our time. First, if L is a line, and P is on line M, but not on line L. There exists at most one point Q, such that Q is not P, Q is on M, and the distance from, that should not read that. The distance from Q to L is equal to the distance from P to L. That's how that should read. That's better. That's better. Okay. There is at most one point Q such that Q is not P, Q is on M, and the distance from Q to L is the same as the distance from P to L. So when we try to show at most one, we try to show that there cannot be two. And since there cannot be two, we pretend that there can be two. This is Q1, this will be Q2. Let's pretend that this happens. Let's pretend that boom, 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 this happens. The distance from P to the line is the same as the distance from Q1 to the line, is the same as the distance from Q2 to the line, and let's see what could possibly go wrong. Well, friends at home, what kind of four-sided figure is that? And what kind of four-sided figure is that? We'll give you a moment, folks at home, to look at that picture. And remember, back to all your definitions on quadrilaterals. And right, this is a Sakari quadrilateral, and so is that. Well, now, why is that bad? Well, what do I know about those four angles? That's right. Those four angles are all acute. Specifically, these two angles are acute. Alpha and beta. Alpha is less than 90 degrees and beta is less than 90 degrees. But alpha plus beta has to be 180 degrees. And that's where your contradiction falls. Alpha can't be less than 90 and beta also less than 90 if they add up to 180. So where did we go wrong? We went wrong thinking that we could construct a second perpendicular that had the same distance to the line. And so that's where we went tragically awry. And there is at most one point Q with the same distance from L that P has at most. We can't prove that there is one. We can prove that there is at most one. At most one. Okay. If L is parallel to M, there's L, there's M, and there exist two points on M that are equidistant from L. then L and M admit a common perpendicular. A uh, common perpendicular is exactly as it sounds, a line that is perpendicular to both. 
if L is parallel to M and there exist two points on M that are equidistant from L, then L and M admit a common perpendicular. This is easier to show than you would think. Friends, what four-sided figure is this? That's right, it's a Sicari quadrilateral. And since it's a Sicari quadrilateral, we have already proven in neutral geometry that if I connect the midpoint here and the midpoint here, that that segment is perpendicular to both the summit and the base of the Sicari quadrilateral. Since we proved it in neutral, it is true in the hyperbolic plane. And so, boom, there's your common perpendicular. We just have to prove that there is one. That is the one. That's the one. How many common perpendiculars are there? One. And this is actually fairly straightforward to show. So straightforward that I think I'm going to let you do it. I want you to show me... why we cannot have this as a common perpendicular and this as a common perpendicular. I will let you do that when we gather next time. But I will show you this. Given two lines, L and M, Let's talk about alternate interior angles. Let's bring in a transversal. Here is the following. The alternate interior angles are congruent if and only if L and M admit a common perpendicular and T passes through the midpoint of the common perpendicular segment. L and M admit a common perpendicular and T passes through the midpoint of the common perpendicular segment. Not too hard to see. If these happen to be congruent, then construct a midpoint right there, drop a perpendicular this way and a perpendicular this way. That would mean that the two red triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side. That still holds true even in the hyperbolic plane which means that this angle would be congruent to that one. And if that's the case, then I know that this is one line. We've got a linear pair. So we've got one line going through there. And those would be congruent. So we would have the common perpendicular and T passing through the midpoint of the common perpendicular segment. And the proof the opposite way goes the same way. Well, it goes in a similar fashion. The proof the opposite way goes in a similar fashion. If alternate interior angles are congruent, then yes, there is a common perpendicular and it's a special common perpendicular. Okay, so hyperbolic plane shares some things that we think, okay, that makes sense, sort of, uh, but then there are those things that are just, wow, why is that there? So on our next show, we're going to take a look at the line that's just barely parallel. And we're going to talk about that, and it's going to be wild, and you're going to say, wow, I can't believe we did that, and yet we're going to do that. Okay, until next time.